All right. Let's let everybody in. Everybody's logging out. It's so fun. Amazing. Hello. Just getting everybody logged on here. I'm in a Whitney Houston mood, y'all. Welcome, welcome. So I love seeing people's face. Oh, thank you. Yes, I love seeing everybody's faces. So if anything. you're able to show yourself, please do. And why we're all logging on here in the chat section, you can give me a little little message. Tell me where you're coming from. I'm in sunny Kansas City, but had we done this last night, we would have been hitting some storms. So hit me up with where you're at because we're on 7 p.m. Central Time in KC. PA? I'm going to say yeah. Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Welcome. Oh my gosh, all flooding in now. Michigan, Detroit, Michigan. I hope, wonder if Megan and Clara, if you guys are anywhere close to each other. Marilyn, Casey, what's up? PC, what's up? New Mexico, amazing. 2.5 hours from each other, fabulous. Arizona. All right, guys. Oh, got some more people. So as people are logging in and y'all are telling me where you're from, also tell me how far postpartum y'all are or if you're expecting a C-section coming up because I know there's a few people that have been messaging recently that are expecting there are some of us like myself that are further out from having c-sections totally fine once a c-section mom always a c-section mom six days whoa thanks for hopping on that's incredible I was not alive I feel like six days after having a c-section I hadn't showered for sure I'm sure Five years, Mindy, you're like me. Awesome. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you, guys. Three weeks, four weeks, a year and a half, 10 weeks, eight weeks, four months, four times, six days, seven weeks, five years. Fabulous. Three weeks. Okay. So if you guys are like me, had a C-section. This is why I'm so passionate about this stuff. I was given no information. All right. So if that was you, put in the chat bar like a high hand up or me, got no info. Cause I'm not gonna lie, I was a little annoyed or disappointed, disappointed. For PT that I hadn't received any information, but like nobody checked to see if I knew how to adjust my car seat, let alone how to get out of bed properly. Megan, fabulous. There's got to be more too. After my first C-section, after nine years, we actually got a program and our, our hospital system set up to really analyze how women were moving after C-sections. And I thought that was very helpful. Anyone else not really know what to do after having a C-section? Maybe that's why you're here. Or maybe if it's more goes along the lines of like, hey, I'm further out. And I still don't really know what to do to wake up that lower tissue. Let me know. They only showed you to get out of bed. Well, that's amazing, right? Not all of us got Maybe that. Maybe five, much. ten minutes. Great. All right. We'll get started. I hope I don't miss anybody else coming in. So let's close this down. I'm going to show you guys. Can everybody see this? Everybody see my screen? Yes. Perfect. So C sections in my mind and then whoops, any other, hopefully 
pr practitioner that's out there or provider that has seen you, midwife, um, ob gyne nurses, um, uro -gynes, they need to know that C-sections are considered, if not more than vaginal births, depending on what type of vaginal birth we had, they need to be seen for pelvic floor recovery. Now, I just went to a occupational therapy, and I love my OTs. I'm a PT. Occupational therapy um, conference this afternoon, and somebody said, oh, you're doing a C-section webinar tonight. And I said, absolutely. It's my passion. And they said, you know, I just feel like it's a buzzword, like diastasis, just kind of going around like diastasis recti. And I was like, what? <laughs> no, C-sections are a real thing. And if you've not had a C-section, I feel like it's really hard to understand the layers of tissue that are impacted during a cesarean delivery and why somebody might need recovery after it. So thank you all for joining. I truly appreciate it. This is my family. These are my three boys that I had via C-sections. Um, my first one, Jackson here in the blue, I guess they're both in the blue, the bigger one, um, ended up being a C-section that I didn't think I was having. It was an emergency C-section. Um, so that one for me was a little bit harder. I was also, as a pelvic floor PT, I don't think I truly had my pelvic floor PT hat on at the time. And after I was released with him and we didn't know as much because he would have been, he's nine and a half, um, almost 10 years ago, we didn't know what we know now. Like when you get released at six weeks, maybe don't go out for a three mile run like I did because things can develop like pelvic organ prolapse. And that's exactly what happened to me. And I can go into that further later, but we now know like there's a lot of different layers and steps that need to happen in order to set us back into recovery and really healing from a C-section how we want to. And that was really hard for me um, to, to take on, especially having been an athlete um, my whole life. I had a really hard time adjusting to that after having a C-section because I didn't realize, number one, that I wasn't going to be moving for eight weeks. I didn't quite comprehend what that looked like or what that was. Um, and with our firstborn, my little Jack attack, um, was a colicky baby. So we, I was on my feet a lot after a C-section carrying around my seven pound baby up and down almost all night, trying to con control his, um, screams and crying and anything that I could do to help keep him quiet throughout the night and keep him fed. That caused a lot of issues for me, not only like postpartum anxiety and depression, which again was not talked about at that time. Um, and if you guys have gone through that too, I have been there with two of my babies. Um, and it's, it's a challenge and it's a challenge to feel that maybe you're not living up the part as a mom. Um, I'm going to go and ask you guys to mute if you can. I'm trying to find everybody. There we go. Um, being up to par with like on society, on social media, you see a lot, and this is still happening. Again, this was 10 years ago for me, but you see people getting back at 10 weeks postpartum, or I'm sorry, six weeks postpartum, and then mentally struggling with that. And we see patients in here all the time. I had one yesterday and mentally struggling with where she's supposed to be. And I'm like, why are you feeling this way? Well, so-and-so, it looks like this on Instagram. I'm like, but is she talking about what she's feeling while she's doing those activities? Well, no, she's not. I'm like, okay, your journey and her journey are completely different. Number one, during pregnancy, postpartum, how you delivered, even if you both had C-sections, the journey afterwards is different as well. Meaning she may not have a colicky baby. You may have a colicky baby. Your baby might not be sleeping. Her baby may be sleeping. She may have help at home more than you have. Um, your husband or spouse or partner may be traveling. Hers may not. You may be a single parent. Like there's so much more that plays into the tissue healing that you can't get up, get caught up on this comparison with other people out there, let alone even with yourself, trying to compare yourself to what I was pre-baby because everything was different pre-baby. All right. Listening, hopefully tonight after um, we go through this, you'll understand like some steps to go through to building up strength and what we need to be doing after having a baby. And even years later for me, um, second baby. And what we also see in the clinic is people that are going through a traumatic birth 
can um, experience more hypersensitivity after a C-section, fear or nausea when they're like, we ask them to touch their scar. They're like, mm, I'm avoiding that area. I don't really want to touch it. I don't look at it in the mirror. Um, I don't want to see this smiley face down there. Uh, and then also the sensitivity of maybe not wanting to be touched. They um, develop some pain with intercourse. This stuff happens a lot with our traumatic births. Um, we saw this a lot more too, guys, during the last couple of years with COVID, if they've been separated from baby or having the traumatic birth experience through that, um, all this stuff that we can help calm that nervous system to get you back out of that. My third um, ended up with another C-section and that one for me was a lot harder. I did not get back to exercising or going to the gym till I was closer to like eight to 10 months um, because I had a four, a two and a baby to deal with at home, um, taking care of them. And my husband went back to traveling at three weeks postpartum and it was a lot. So mom guilt, I had that a lot. That was a false belief for me. Um, I really, by the third kid, learned to ask for help. And I encourage all of you guys to do the same. Even if you're on baby number one, ask for help after C-sections and we'll go over why in a little bit. So what happens during a C-section? Before we get into this, I'm going to click this video because you guys have probably seen videos like this on the internet um, talking about what's happening during the C-section. So this is one that we have out on social media, going through the skin, the fat layer, then the fascia, the abdominal muscles are split up and down along that diastasis region. Peritoneum is just an organ between the muscles and the organs that hold the organs in place. Then cutting into the, um, pulling down the bladder, cutting into the uterus and delivering the baby. So we always say seven different layers of tissue that has to happen in order for us to birth the baby or have the happy birthday portion, um, of the C-section. And with that, so you can see here, if you want to read through it a little bit more, um, so often still when patients will come in and see me in the clinic and I love C-section mamas, C-section moms are my jam and my passion, but so often they're like, well, I saw a PT, but I'm still having issues with X, Y, Z. And when we ask them like, what exactly did your PT do, or maybe you haven't really done anything. What have they done with the scar tissue? So you yourself or the PT Maybe they just moved the skin across that scar on your abdominal tissue and said, oh, it's moving pretty well. Things look good. Well, as you can see, the skin is that very top layer and there's so many layers underneath of it that's still in effect. So I like to think of a C-section scar like you're seeing the incision, but underneath the incision is like looking at an iceberg. The incision for you is that tip of the iceberg that's out of the water and then everything underneath that incision is the rest of that iceberg. Think about the Titanic, right? Like they only saw a little bit of that iceberg above water and then underneath was this huge massive piece of ice. That's what a C-section is. There's so many more layers underneath that can be taut, nice and tight, um, that can be in the way, that can be holding restrictions places, that can be causing some of the issues that we're having that if we don't go past that skin layer, we're gonna be missing so much more. Let me add these people in. Let me know, put in the comment section or in the chat section if that makes sense, but makes sense, or if you have questions on it, put it there too and let me know. Okay, symptoms that may happen after a C-section. So this was another one another video that went out on um, Instagram, but I thought it explained it pretty darn well. Things that I had happened that I didn't okay, expect after a C-section was having back pain, program. having literal discomfort and pain, having pain with intercourse, having um, back pain with bowel movements, rectal sensations, rectal spasms, pain with intercourse, um, sensitivity issues, all of this stuff that people don't talk about, we hear C-sections, you think it's an easy way to have a birth and it's totally not. So this is one of the videos is, has done amazing on social to get just the word out about a C-section and that there's so much more happening. 
Um, but really what that comes down to is like these, I have had all of these symptoms with having three C-sections and not everybody will experience these, but this is just some that I had had. Bladder urgency and frequency. So after my first baby, I had no idea what scar tissue was. It still was that top layer. And I'm like, I had been working the top layer again. This was 10 years ago. And I started having crazy abdominal urgency and cramping that I didn't know what to do. So I finally sought out a pelvic floor PT to help me dive deeper into mobility. And it was amazing at the relief that we got with that. So when that video of dissecting the different layers, it showed that bladder shifting down, them cutting into the uterus. Well, when that bladder gets put back in place, the scar tissue that sits on the uterus well, can scar down to that bladder. And that's exactly what started to happen to me. And I honestly, I didn't know until we went in for a second and they confirmed it for me, but that scar tissue can adhere to the bladder. Then when your bladder's filling with urine, so think about like, we want about like, you're going to feel urgency frequency with like 16 ounces of any kind of beverage. So think like a, a grande coffee from Starbucks, like that type of size. So when that bladder stretching as it's filling up with urine, if it's hitting scar tissue, that bladder is, you know, feeling like, well, I don't think I can stretch any further. I think I'm stretching as far as I can go. So I'm going to send the signal that we got to go, got to go get this stuff out of here. My body was so ramped up with that decreased mobility in the bladder. I was wanting to pee every like 30 minutes. And that was not something I was used to. And this did not kick in for me guys after my first one until I was about eight months postpartum. So it wasn't something that kicked in right off of the bat, right after I got my catheter out. This was something that I had not messed with that scar tissue past the superficial layer, past that skin layer. And so things had started to adhere down and decrease mobility. And that's where the bladder urgency and frequency can kick in, not for just me, but for other people like you and I. Lower abdominal cramping, because we're that scar sits, we've also got the bowels in that area. So as stool's moving through, you know, small intestine into large intestine, and then it's got to come out the rectum. If it's in that area in that lower abdomen where we're having restrictions because of star tissue, scar tissue and where it's anchoring down because scar tissue has no boundaries, ain't no shame where it wants to anchor down. It will toe onto anything that it can. And for some of us, it's where our rectum and lower abdominal bowels sit. So we can get that lower abdominal cramping right before we need to have a bowel movement. We can get those rectal spasms as well. And that plays into that. Labial and clitoral pain. This comes in with that the uterus, again, sitting in your abdominal cavity, you have a ligament called the round ligament. Does anybody, does that sound familiar to anybody who's been pregnant? Those guys come out to the front of the pubic bone, okay? So those ligaments attach to the front of the pubic bone. We all have that front pubic bone area. You can feel it down um, below your cesarean scar if it's the horizontal one. And right at that area, those ligaments attach there. But again, if the scar tissue adhesions are decreasing restrictions or movement there, you can start to feel labial clitoral sensations. Patients will feel this too if we're doing scar tissue work when they're laying on the plinth or laying on the table in the office. If I'm maneuvering tissue, they're like, ooh, I feel some zingers there. That can happen as we're creating mobility in that tissue. We want to just make sure it's more loosey-goosey and not letting it adhere down. So this is all about prevention if we can't, so we don't end up with these symptoms. Same thing with that ligament or same thing with the uterus having ligaments that attach to the front. It also has a ligaments that attach to the back, to your low back sacral region. Now, same thing. If the uterus starts to adhere one direction, more to the left, more to the right, because the ligaments attach at the low back region, you can start to get some pull on the low back and start to create low back pain. A lot of times when people come in with low back pain, we're always checking out abdominal scars. And a C-section is one of the biggest things that if we can create mobility there, even 10 years, 18 years later, they're feeling better in the back and less tension being held there. Pain with sex. We typically think you didn't deliver vaginally. So why are we having any issues in the vagina? Well, your muscles down there kind of respond to emotion and they also attach in that lower area where we're having the attachment of the scar, pelvic floor muscles and the scar. 
So we can get what we call hypertonic pelvic floor muscles or pain with intercourse. So a lot of times we've got 28 different muscles down here. And a lot of times they're either tight on one side than the other, could be on the left versus right, front to back. Everybody's high and tight. It can be different for everyone. Lower abdominal bloating and cramping. This kind of goes hand in hand with the, uh, or I'm sorry, the bloating goes hand in hand with the cramping or the bladder frequency because we are having the tension of that tight scar tissue laying down, it can create bloating or what we would call like the shelf or a mom pooch underneath that scar. You're getting some fluid or some bloatedness or even above it because it's anchoring down, fluid's not able to pass through. So that's why scar tissue is so important to allow lymphatic fluids to move through and to decrease that pain. And then let's not forget prolapse. Prolapse is anything that's coming out the vaginal opening or the rectal opening. So the pelvic floor muscles hold up organs down in the pelvis. You have a bladder, a uterus, and your bowels. The muscles are holding out those organs. Now, it doesn't matter if you've delivered vaginally or via C-section, if we did a lot of bearing down or pushing or lifting, even after a C-section or during pregnancy, we can, or constipation is another one that can lead towards this too. Those muscles can start to go in towards the vaginal opening with the pressure of the bladder, the uterus, or the bowels coming in. So we could see that vaginally and someone may experience feeling pressure down there. Now, out of these symptoms, if you've had a C-section, Comment in the chat what you have felt before and let me know. Makes sense. Um, Barbara, I'm right there with you. I didn't want to touch myself or have anybody touch me after my C-section, my second one. And it was probably the the scariest. I didn't, I didn't know when I was ever going to outgrow that piece of it. Um, bowel movement, some cramping, didn't know it was related. Yes, hopefully you're understanding that now. Abdominal cramping, low back pain. Fabulous. Fabulous. The fact that you're answering. Thank you. Not that you're dealing with it, but thank you for responding. All right. I had a C-section. I don't need a recovery plan. I had a C-section. I don't need to go to public floor physical therapy. I had mentioned this earlier. We're still seeing this from docs that think that C-section moms don't need to be in PT or don't need to be doing any rehab. And I think it's just a load of BS. Um, it's major abdominal surgery just like having a vaginal birth at a grade three or a grade four, we need to be seeing these people in the clinic, or you guys need to be seeing people virtually and doing some sort of work. So because you can see all the symptoms that we've had, the goal is to really kind of prevent that. Another thing that we're seeing um, in the clinic is we're not seeing our C-section moms until six or eight weeks postpartum. And we want to get to these ladies sooner than that, because y'all are already lifting your babies, whether they're six pounds, give or take a couple up to 10 pounds, give or take a couple. So you guys are carrying these babies so often in the beginning that we start to develop things, um, body mechanics, bad habits that we could start to change earlier on. So a lot of like our patients, we're trying to see at two weeks virtually, and then seeing them in the clinic at four weeks to start changing the body's behavior on what it's doing, how it's connecting with the core and pelvic floor as they're lifting the baby, getting up off the sofa, getting in and out of bed, getting off the toilet, that sort of thing. Um, some of these women are experiencing pain, pressure, bladder leakage, or increased bleeding early on. We're finding a lot of the women don't know, they don't really have a baby wearing plan or don't really have a walking plan. And we're just kind of doing things willy nilly until they go back to their doctor or they go in and see somebody or chat with somebody online. Um, so it's really giving them step-by-step -step instructions or how to actually build up the core and floor without having the pressure, pain, and leakage. A lot of these women um, are learning about scar tissue online, but maybe not knowing how to do it and how much in depth. And then a lot of these women too, the ab reconnection there's this disassociation between the core and they don't really know what ab exercises they should be doing and how early or when to avoid it, what they're looking for while they're doing it that may be causing more harm than good. Some of the garments postpartum, just wanted to throw this out here for you new early ones. Um, 
Bayo Bay. I'm a huge Bayo Bay fan over the belly binders. And I used to love a belly binder when that was the only thing out there. I would get a belly binder from the hospital, chalk it up with my hospital bill. And I would wear that postpartum for the first couple of weeks. Now that Bayo Bay, it's a brand and I can put the link in the chat bar, has come out with postpartum recovery shorts. So the abdominal area is nice and compression. So it's going to hold your belly muscles in to give them support, especially after a C-section. I'm obsessed with it. But then we also have the compression in the legs. So if you've had a C-section, which everyone on here sounds like they've had, imagine when you were standing with the baby or at the sink washing bottles and you look down at your scar later on and you notice it's a little bit more swollen, a little bit more inflamed. We didn't have the correct body garments to help support the tissue when we were doing too much. And it's hard to know when we're doing too much until you look down and you're like, why am I swollen? Or why is it, you know, kind of puckering or pushing out, bulging out at that incision? It's because we don't have the correct garments, or maybe we've done too much that we should have been sitting down a little bit more. That's where these guys come in hand. Um, the code for them, if you guys want to purchase them is empower your pelvis for 15% off. They also make a great um, C-section binder, C-section bloomers. I'm sorry, not a binder. I just read that on the screen. C-section bloomers. But I will tell you from all my C-section moms, they would rather have the support in the legs. It feels better than having underwear cut off at your thighs where you're having the swelling. And so these are ones that we highly recommend is getting in some kind of C-section compression shorts or postpartum recovery shorts. They have been out of stock in a couple of um, the sizes. So if you're interested in that, just let me know. And I will send, kind of got a, a group of patients in the clinic right now that we're waiting to check in on them every day. And once they're back in stock, we're sending out an email to let people know. These guys too, if you're like, cool, I'm no longer a new mom, I'm further out. Um, I still wear them sometimes. I'm five years postpartum and I will put them on just because I've had a, uh, a lot more swelling recently with not doing enough scar tissue. And it feels really good to have them on after my first kiddo. I wore them for, um, well, I didn't have them with my first kiddo after my second kiddo. I wore them probably for about eight months, especially while I was returning to work after the third kiddo, I wore them closer to about 20 months postpartum. Um, I was also feeling a lot more prolapse. So that felt very good to have that support around there too. Um, but not going to lie, I really, I like the compression. It's like having compression um, leggings on and right now biker shorts are still in. So it's a great win-win in my opinion. You might have any questions on the supportive garments. Oh, Melissa's got them. Awesome. So she likes both. Good to know. Bloomers and the belly band. Yes. The belly band for pregnancy is my all-time favorite thing to do as well or to have for patients. All right. Scar. Scar tissue. So we talked about skin, moving the tissue around just in the skin, that first layer where we, I don't think touch base or talk to people early enough on this is when you are earlier out from being released from your doctor, make sure that you're doing some gentle petting to the tissue, to the skin. We need to make sure that we are petting the tissue and working on getting rid of that inflammation. I really want the sound to work for this one. Perfect. So this first portion, I- How to do a C-section scar massage. We're gonna go skip forward here. This is what to do uh, after you've had a baby. Recovery. So before eight weeks, like three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. Don't mess with the scar itself until the doctor releases you. Um, it says that the scar is completely healed. Before that time, I want you to stay above the scar. So you're going to have a lot of inflammation up in this area, typically navel to um, a couple inches above the scar. So if my C-section scar is here, I want to stay above this. So, And all of this area, guys, that I'm talking about above the scar, this is what gets really restricted down and adhered down. Um weeks after having the C-section that we've got to spend some time here. 
because you'll notice if you're further out of having your C-section, it's really not just the incision that's pulling tight. It's that two inches above the incision, but below the navel, below your belly button, that starts to get restricted. Because when you've had that C-section, you're being pulled open to have your baby. So all of that tissue that's been pulled open and up is adhering down and creating the scar. Things so that you so mentioned um, before your eight week release mark or six week release mark is gentle petting. So this would be the type of um, pressure that you would have when you are actually petting your dog or your cat. You wanna work on moving the lymphatic fluid, this inflammation off to the side. So gentle pets, I like to just tell my clients um, about 10 strokes on one side and then switch to the other. Um, want them to follow suit into your lymphatic system. So anything that kind of is in the upper coordinates tend to go out to the side and anything here in the lower tends to stay pulled to the lower. But we want to let the body know that it's okay to go out to the side and then flush back out. Um, another little trick that you can do in your early weeks postpartum and especially later postpartum is a breathing technique. So you can work on. And if you're at home, go ahead and lay down, try this one out. Doesn't matter if you're early postpartum or for the five years postpartum, this is one we still do almost every single day with every single patient that comes in as a nervous system release. It calms down the body. I call it a five of dice. First placing your hand on your belly button. Be nice and, and gentle with the tissue. As you blow out, you're just going to follow Notice your belly I'm down. I'm not it's pushing. Very gentle pressure. I'm not pushing down. There I'm go. just following that breath down with the pressure of my, the weight of my hand. And then from there, you're going to move over to um, a corner and it can be any corner. I call this technique the five of dice because you start in the center. Breathe in, exhale. Follow it down, follow it down. And then you end back in the center on top of that navel or belly button. So for me, I call it five of dice again, just like five of dice, you've got your four corners in the center. Start at the end in the here or in the center, following it down, gentle pressure. That is a good thoracic duct release for the lymphatic system. So it's going to flush you out. It might feel, you might feel better afterwards, not as bloated, not as full. Um, and it's a great little release. And the only time I wouldn't recommend doing that is if you are um, still bleeding postpartum or if you are on your menstrual cycle. But besides that. And then coming back up here. This would be more of the superficial scar. The whole area of the scar might feel different. You might find like right here, I'm more restricted when I pull up more in that midline of the scar. So I would sit and hold that um, stretch and that tissue should lengthen after it has a um, just a sustained gentle stretch there. Your scar tissue is kind of like butter in the way that it melts and starts to change. So the more that you hold a gentle stretch, you'll start to feel it release that it, you get a further stretch on it. So you can do this throughout the whole scar. And then tonight, that's all we're gonna do. So when I'm on the scar guys, it is like hands on a piano. Like I got piano fingers and I'm checking, what does it move like going up and down at this portion of the scar, this portion of the scar, this portion of the scar. Again, this is the skin level. And going across all of it. And I might feel, oh my gosh, it's more restricted right here in the middle. Then I'm going to hold that gently, like a one out of 10, two out of 10. If a 10 out of 10 is take me to the hospital, we're keeping it a one out of 10, two out of 10 on a stretch. And you'll notice because the body feels safe at a one or a two out of 10, a gentle stretch, it's going to start to melt and release. And you're going to start to create more mobility. Keep it very gentle, very light. And then after you go up and down, you can, or after you pull it up, you can check down. What does it feel like to go towards my pubic bone? Is it gaining more mobility? Can we get more mobility? So that, um, with the skin level also wanting to check out left to right. How does it move left to right? How does it feel? If same thing, if I'm feeling, if I go to the right, does it feel more tight than if I go to the left? If I hold it, do I feel like it starts to melt and release? And then I'm going to go um, in a circle with my fingers, like a clockwise or a counterclockwise. 
And same thing, just checking in that mobility across the area. You may find you're more tight on one side of your body than the other. It typically goes with where they're anchoring during your surgery, wherever the doctor decided to knot it and then start to sew it back. You can have that. You can also have a little pooch, a little fluid pooch. I had this after my last one and I will still have it if I have not done scar tissue for a while. And again, I'm five months or five years postpartum after my third that I have to sit there and work on that scar tissue. This is something that I'm still doing years later. I'm not doing it near as often as I am or I did in the beginning, but it is still something I check in on myself because um, for instance, last week I started having bladder spasms at the office and I'm laying down on the middle of the floor during the uh, clinic day. And people are like, what's going on? I'm like, man, I am just like, it feels like I got kicked in the belly. My bladder is very upset. I don't know what I just ate. And then it hit me like, Ooh, Amanda, you have not done scar tissue in a while. So I went and laid down. I had one of the girls, um, work on me, like what I do with our C-section moms. And she was like, Oh my gosh, you're so restricted. And I'm like, I know I can feel that too, because I haven't touched in on that in a while. And it just, it, again, I'm not set on a schedule of doing it every day. Like I did it in the early time frame. Um, where you can get that stuff to really loosen up and feel good. Now I'm back on track of doing it every night because it has been restricted and I can feel symptoms again. So it's something that as you're working on it, you'll start to space it out and not be doing it, you know, so often. And people will say like, is this a forever thing? It's a tool to keep in your toolbox for when you need it, but definitely doing it more often than not, especially if you've had multiple C-sections or you're still within that two to five year range, definitely the first two years postpartum, but scar tissue, according to research, you know, with the C-sections, it can continue to lay down up to that five-year mark. So just keeping that in mind as you're working through it. Um, Another thing with the scar tissue, when you hit your six weeks postpartum, you're only about 55% healed. So keep that in mind if you're trying to get back to any exercise too soon. Okay, I'm going to show you muscle. So this is the next layer down. If you have your forearm, you can pull the skin. That's how deep you are when you do the skin movement. If we're going to move the muscle in our forearm, you're going to go a little bit deeper, right? You can see that indention on how to move that tissue. And that is this guy. That wasn't too far layer. So we've been at skin more of that superficial to go in more muscularly. We're going to just let our fingers dig in a little bit deeper and you're going to feel more of a stretch in the muscle tissue. This is where I find women are just a little, and it's still in that area. If you notice, I'm not on the incision, but I am like 18 months postpartum here. I'm not on my incision, which is about a half an inch lower than my left hand, um, closer to my pants but I'm above it during that space still that got pulled back and it is a sticky. Bit more tight with our C-sections from that C-section scar in this midline below the belly button where this might, we might be more fluffy. That muscle tissue is not really working well, but when you stand, you'll be able to see a distinct kind of fold here. And usually this tissue is more taut. So we want to work on stretching getting into that deeper layer of muscle tissue. So skin, we stayed up nice, superficial, rolling through that. We want to get deeper into the muscular layer. I personally, when we hit um, further along in our recovery, I like to plant a finger, kind of like anchor it down and then move the tissue through. So this might be at like three months postpartum and on. If I'm still in the early phases, I will just work on moving that tissue without anchoring. But when you get further along past that three months, you could be 18 months postpartum like me, still anchoring and pulling. You're going to feel a little bit more of that burning and stretching sensation of getting that tissue to lengthen better. Um, If you have a pocket of fluid like I do, this might be what you want to do around that pocket of fluid too, is kind of anchor side to side and see where you can get that that tissue to improve. Um, Not doesn't work best. Again, if you haven't been released by your doctor, I would not advise doing this. You really want to keep it more gentle um, throughout the mobility and stay away from the scar piece. And then, and with this, so both of these videos so far have shown above the incision. Keep in mind, you've got this tissue below that pubic bone as well. 
and I mentioned the pockets of fluid, if the tissue, if you're only working above the incision, we're missing the stuff below the incision too. So don't be afraid to get down there underneath at that pubic bone and pulling it and up and down, left to right, clockwise, counterclockwise, and even at diagonals, because that can start to create space and start to lift that scar up by releasing the tension, like the anchors on all sides of it, if that makes sense. Organ layer, this one's a little bit deeper, but this goes in with that bladder mobility and in with the um, the uterus. This is not for our early C-section moms, but this is one that we go over in our groups as well. Far I'm going to shift that forward a little bit. Right on top of that score or above that score. I'm going to find two inches apart. Now we have a lot of tissue. So right at that pubic bone, at that scar, coming off of the pubic bone, a few inches apart, and you could feel that pubic bone going down. So if you're laying on your belly, or I'm sorry, you would not lay in your belly. If you're laying on your back, you can push your fingers in to feel where that's at. That you're going to go through here. So you really just want to start with placing your hands and letting them sink into. Now, if they're not moving and they're on something hard, it's most likely your pubic bone and you need to move up a little bit to be able to sink in. So with being the two inches apart, you're going to be able to find your bladder in your abdominal cavity. You want that tissue to relax. Let it sink down. And you'll notice my hands are pretty much down into the system. They're going to be in a little bit of a cupping. And you want your hands just to gently check the tissue side to side. So with this one, we're just moving it left to right or even up at an angle where the tissue pressure is going this way or you can do it where it's just going side to side this way. You'll feel a difference from side to side with that bladder mobility. Usually the bladder with C-sections is one of the one of the areas that gets um, more of the restrictions because the bladder sits in front of that uterus. So the scar that cuts through the uterus, um, scar tissue doesn't have any boundaries. It'll attach onto anything. So with that bladder being so close to that scar, it usually decreases mobility of the bladder. And that's where we can have more increased urgency or frequency. So it's a good idea. And that's to about like mobility a 77% so adherence daily after just you know, one C-section. It's usually tight when it goes to the left. You want to just pay attention to that as your tissue mobility improves. Um, you know, a week from now, a couple nights from now, you might find that, wow, it feels about the same as that right side. And you're still treating it like the superficial and muscular layers where you're going to hold it for a little bit, let that turn into melted butter, let it lengthen, and then you might go test it out again. So all together, the tissue stuff is going to be that three to five minutes, superficial layer, muscular layer, deep organ layer, the visceral layer. Um, so with the scar tissue, there's a lot that I have seen where you need to be doing like 15 minutes a day. Let me tell you something. As a mom of three kids, I don't have 15 minutes a day to myself. When I have time for my scar tissue work, even after having one, two, or the third, it was bedtime for me. When I finally laid down on my back is when I would do my scar tissue work. And probably five times out of 10, I was falling asleep doing my scar tissue because I was so exhausted. And if that's you and that's your time to do your scar tissue work, awesome. See what you can get done, but don't don't overthink it. Don't um, beat yourself up on it if it's if you're not doing it to the standards that you're seeing online. So I like to tell my moms, even one to five minutes, start out with one minute. And when one minute seems like I can accomplish that, cool, add on another minute. Now we're going to go two minutes. But let's not put 15 minutes on our calendar when I'm seeing 15 minutes of it and I'm feeling overwhelmed. We're going to start small baby steps. Even if I'm five years postpartum, I'm going to do baby steps and see if I can start to stack on a couple minutes every day to see how this can move. And then one day when it's feeling like it's moving great, I'm going to give it a day in between and see, can I do it a little bit every other day and still feel like my tissue mobility feels great? Then I'll start to space it out again, maybe two days in between and then a week in between, and then a month in between. And if that tissue staying healthy and feels like it's moving, that's how we're going to start to space it out. But start small, baby goals, and then accomplish it, make yourself feel good, and check it out. 
Best exercises to start after C-sections or even if you're starting fresh out of the gate right now, breathing is always number one. And I wish they would tell us this in the hospital, but your breath, when you breathe in y'all, you can feel that breath go into the belly, down into the pelvic floor. As you exhale, all of that tissue is coming back up and in. So focusing on what I would call like 360 breathing, no matter where you are in your recovery, breathing into your ribs as you inhale, the ribs are going to come out left to right. As you exhale, they're going to come back in. Now, why am I focusing on ribs instead of my belly? Number one, if we breathe into our belly, our belly's already been stretched at least for nine months, more if we've had more children. So putting more pressure in the abdomen is going to put more pressure down on the pelvic floor, but not in a good way. Breathing out into the ribs allows us to stretch out the tight abdominal muscles that have been tight, your obliques out on your side. So it creates mobility in the diaphragm. Diaphragm, your breathing muscle creates more mobility in the pelvic floor for us to be able to get it to do what we want it to do later. So focusing, breathing into the ribs, pop open that umbrella. As you exhale, that umbrella is going to come back in. You could also make it focus on when you inhale, breathe in, you can breathe into the back side of the ribs. As you exhale, exhale out the front and start to get that left to right and the front to back mobility without us belly breathing and putting so much pressure on our diastasis that we might still have postpartum. And then walking either my moms after they had a baby are either walking a way too much and they're going out for three miles at four days postpartum and then wondering why they're having pressure and pain and leakage and they can't walk without any of that stuff or they're not walking enough in my opinion walking helps improve lymphatic flow and it helps tissues heal so we want to get on a good walking regimen to start increasing tissue mobility down there and function in the beginning, walking flat surfaces, if you have somebody that can push a stroller or push the baby or go out on your own without pushing anything, please do that. You can focus on your form. You can focus on your core. You can fo focus if you've had a C-section, is it wanting to pull you forward or are you leaning back? We want good posture, ribs being stacked over the pelvis. So it gives you that time frame to do so. As you've moved in later down, on down the road where you're maybe not noticing any bladder leakage, any pain, any increased bleeding from too much walking or any pressure, we can start to test the boundaries with walking up hills, okay? After you start to feel good doing stairs in the house, you can do some hills like walking up your driveway. How does that feel? Does it feel like it's increasing any pain, pressure, discomfort? Again, we want to avoid pain, pressure, or leakage. If you start to feel pain, pressure, or leakage, then we need to modify the activity that we're doing. Another thing you can do is sitting on a bike and doing cycling on a bike. So like think Peloton. Problem is some of our patients, you want to make sure after at least like 10 to 15 minutes in the early stages that you're coming up off of the bike. And this is not something, the bike is not like to be done at two weeks postpartum, three weeks postpartum, like give it a little bit more time on that incision healing, but definitely around that six weeks, you can start to do the bike. And then running, you know, there are things that we need to hit up, um, building, working up in our strengthening um, side of it too, with our pelvic floor before we truly get back into the running side. So pelvic floor, typically after a C-section, it's considered hypertonic. What does that mean? It means it's tight. We have 28 different muscles down there. Majority of the muscles, um, our type A personalities want to contract and want to help out where we have weakness. Okay. We tend to see them helping out more in the back side of the pelvis because in the back side of the pelvis, our mama's are shifting their weight to hold their babies. Okay. So that backside is clenching to hold ourselves up or we're sitting more often with our butt tucked under. So that pelvic floor gets nice and grippy in the back, which means in the front, we have our type B personalities. So our type B personality is around the urethral area, um, upper portion up here. It goes hand in hand with a weakened core. We have a weakened front area here. 
they are on vacation, okay? So your type A personalities in the back are overworking, doing all the work. These guys in the front are just taking a break. And we've got to get them functioning well. That's where walking can be so good for these muscles because when you're walking with good posture, it's going to have everybody working together. As you get stronger and feel really good and you can go out and maybe do some hills, you're going to start to tap into the front portion of the pelvic floor core. Or as you're walking and pushing your stroller, if you're leaning into that stroller, you're going to gain function of that front portion of the pelvic floor and those abdominal muscles. So it can be very good to get out and just move your body. Pelvic floor mobility. People typically aren't doing stretches after a C-section. And because we just talked, we've got tight muscles and weak muscles. It's always good to do some pelvic floor mobility. What's considered uh, pelvic floor mobility? It could be cat cow. It could be child's pose. For me personally, child's pose after a C-section, especially in those like two to six weeks postpartum, it pinched my incision. It wasn't very comfortable. So I would do cat cow where I'm curling my back, making a letter C with my back or going the opposite direction as a cow looking up at the ceiling. I would couple that with a happy baby stretch where I'm laying on my back and holding my legs out to really open up the pelvic floor. Um, I also would work on rolling over to my belly around like four Ooh. weeks postpartum to start to stretch out that tissue. I'd put a pillow underneath the core. So then I'm in a, still in a little flex position because I'm not going to lie. It scared the crap out of me to lay on my belly. Even though I was a belly sleeper, I wanted to be there. It was just really hard mentally to grasp for that. Does anybody else felt that like scared to lay on the belly, scared to roll over onto the belly? That's a very common thing um, that we see in here. And a lot of times we're helping patients get into that too. You want to stretch out that tissue though, or that C-section and the adhesions and that scar tissue will start to pull you more forward. So being able just to lay flat, you can lay flat on your hands and breathe. And if you're realizing like, man, uh, I'm laying here and breathing, but I am having like a nervous system anxiety attack, then roll, roll back over, roll to your side. Oh no, you don't go, have RJ. To go, 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 go. freak yourself out with that. Once that pelvic floor mobility kicks in and you're doing some stretches, then I would add in core support as exercises. But early postpartum, especially for my newbies, if you're like one week out or even um, once you're like in the hospital, one week out, you're working on blowing out to move. You're doing that as you get up off the chair, off of the couch, um, out of the recliner. That is all a core and pelvic floor movement. So you're blowing out as you move from sit to stand, even while you're holding baby, getting up off the toilet, that breath, like we talked about in the beginning, as you inhale, it's going to stretch that pelvic floor. It's going to stretch the core as you blow out. It's going to start to remind the tissue, Hey, we've got to come back into support. We've got to turn on that core. So breathing in and out is an excellent core and pelvic floor exercise. Another way that we can start to do that is when you feel like you've got your breath down and figured out, like when you go to stand and you're blowing out, then you can add in what we call a zip up. So thinking of a zipper connecting your pubic bone to your breastbone, and as you blow out, you're bringing that zipper up with you. You're giving your torso a little hug. We don't want to see it pooch out in the lower abdomen. We don't want to feel pressure down in the pelvic floor, but we want to give it a nice, gentle zip up. Okay. That's going to remind the tissue to kick in those lowers first and then the outers up top with having been pregnant and then having a C-section, the outer tissue, your obliques want to work with everything that you're doing and the lower belly where we have had our major abdominal surgery, they're still on vacation and your brain has to remind them over and over and over day after day how to connect the dots again. And I feel like because we are missing this piece, this puzzle piece with our C-section moms, we're not tapping in to those lower abs, the hip bone to hip bone, the zip ups, how to connect it every single day. We're still having this lower abdominal pooch, this lower abdominal swelling, this weakness down there, because we're not doing 
our job to reconnect the dots down there. And so often a lot of our moms that come in too, it's like this disconnect from the brain to those lower muscles. And if we can start to rewire the system, remember we had all of those layers cut. The nerves were part of that too. And nerves grow slowly. So if they're coming from the brain and branching out to the muscle tissue, if they're growing slowly, which they do, they grow slower than your hair, you're not going to feel as strong yet, or we start to create compensations. But if we can start to remind the brain early on, hey, this is how we're going to need to rewire. This is what we need to get back to doing. So often than not, we're building up a core stability so much sooner, if we can remind that tissue sooner, that then our patients aren't having the discomfort and symptoms down the road. So really start to retrain how you're doing your scar tissue work, how you're connecting the dots with your breath, and with the core to get that tissue to fire up again. Let me know in the chat bar if that makes sense or if you have any questions on that. Zip on exhale, Barbara, yes. So first practice moving sit to stand, just blowing out as you stand up. Then you sit back down and you're gonna blow out and zip up to stand and stand up and feel like, okay, that's how it feels. Then you can try that with your kiddos, holding them and make sure that when you're coming to stand, you're still here, ribs over pelvis, and we're not leaning back. And you can practice this with weight at your house too. If you have an eight pound baby, try eight pound weights. How does it feel when you move sit to stand with it? Megan says, how about how many weeks postpartum should you start the zipper strategy? Honestly, is first start with the breath, so if you're one week, two weeks, four weeks postpartum, get that breath. And if you're at that two weeks that you want to start kind of zipping and feeling like, am I even feeling anything? You can, but always start with the breath first and see if you can start to remind yourself to blow out as you move to stand. Because so often than not, people will skip the breath and go to the zipper. And then when they're doing the zipper, they're holding their breath, which is then pushing pressure down and out. That's doing the opposite. So remember, we want to blow out as we zip to create that stability, okay? And then you're doing that with exercises every single day to start to build up the stability and strength, all right? So in the past, what we've done with this is I have worked with women in our core coaching program, and I've done it where it's been eight weeks and it's anywhere from the one to two K to work for eight weeks. I'm not doing that this year. I've moved the C-section program into our monthly membership. So if this is something that you want day-to-day -day exercises to do, and they're already done for you, you go in, you do them for eight minutes a day. There's a scar tissue tab. Here are some options for you. Um, our pelvic posse membership is $50 a month to go in and run with the exercises. You can ask questions in there, um, or you can sign up for the year at, I think it's $494 is what the link is. And then if you sign up for the year, I'm throwing in um, a coaching call with me too. So you can see, Hey, Amanda, this is what I've got going on. And this is the exercises I've been doing in the membership. And I just really want to know um, where I need to focus more with the symptoms that I'm having. So I would love to help you guys out. I'm a little busy in my day-to-day -day lifestyle to have the time to do the four, I mean, sorry, the eight weeks of coaching that I've done in the past, but would love to help you any way I can. Um, if you guys are interested in doing that, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put the links in the chat bar. So this one is the 50, whoops, this one is for the $50 membership. And then I can email these out too as well. And then um, does anybody else, does anybody have any questions while I'm doing this that you want to ask um, out loud? You can. Did anything, anybody learn anything tonight? Let's go with that. Or any questions on anything that you learned? Awesome, Mary again, thank you. Um, if you decided that you want to move forward to do work with the coaching, 
once you purchase it, you can log in and start doing it tonight or tomorrow. The weeks are set up, ready to go, and it'll drip out once you finish it. Those scar tissue videos are in there along with a few other ones that I have all of my C-section people doing early on and further postpartum. Um, so that is, those are options on there too. And then there's little videos, like I said, of daily exercises and daily scar tissue work. Um, Megan, I feel like I went straight to that deeper organ massage. Can I start over with skin level? Yes. So, um, like I'm five years postpartum, Megan, and I mentioned me having issues pop up in this last week. Last night I went to skin layer and then it, you're, it starts to loosen up a little bit. Then you get into muscular layer. Then you get into that organ layer. So because scar tissue is that deep, deep layer, it's got to melt down for you to get in a little bit farther. And I still last night was working on it, feeling, and what is nervy and scar tissue feeling is the burning and kind of like an itchy sensation as you get further out, like where you're at it for um, months postpartum or 14 months postpartum you will definitely probably be feeling more burning and itchiness as you're doing it and just at, let it go, breathe for a moment. It should disappear. And then as you get going again, um, you might feel that as well. Um, thank you, Maggie. Thank you, Mindy. Thank you all. All right. Well, thank you guys for staying on for the hour. I appreciate it. If you guys have any more questions, Please shoot them over to me in a DM, in an email, in a text message. Mindy, how old? My five-year-old's at home or else I would let him say hello. But thank you all so much. Have a wonderful evening. Please reach out if you need anything. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.